Get free tech advice for your business from O2 Gurus. Search O2 Business for more. Hey guys, welcome to BTech. It's Basil here with two of the hottest tablets that are out this holiday season. We've got the Nexus 9 and the Galaxy Tab S8.4. HTC and Google, Samsung and Google, I guess, both run Android. The HTC made Google Nexus 9 has been in our possession for 24 hours. In fact, less than that. So this is in no way a review or a conclusive in-depth into this tablet. What it is, is a spec comparison and a a load of first impressions smooshed together in this side-by-side -side video. The first thing we're going to talk about is the thing that we can really get our hands on the most quickly and that is of course that design. We've covered this a fair bit in our other Nexus 9 videos and you can see big hands it fits well in one hand. The fact that sides are recessed slightly means that you've got a lot more grip when you hold it upside down for example and it isn't too slippery especially with that matte backing right there. As far as the key design highlights go, you've got a very solid frame around this thing. The screen itself is big. The aspect ratio, a lot of people have been grumping about and that's because it isn't the traditional long 16 by nine or thereabouts aspect ratio of traditional 2560 by 1600 or full HD devices. This is akin to Apple's iPad with Retina display, 1536 by 2048. That means you've got a more square display. It's gonna be better for gaming. On-screen controls will be easier to reach. You've also got those speakers that'll be great for gaming, which we will come onto later. It will be worse for movies. You're gonna get black bars up top and down at the base. So unless you like your old school movies, it might not be for you, but that's just one aspect of this very, very cool tablet. We're gonna carry on talking about the design, and like we said, you've got those stereo speakers at the front, which is immediately brilliant. On the front, you've also got a 1.6 megapixel camera down at the base, micro USB connector, left-hand side, no buttons, but on the right-hand side, volume rocker and power button. Up at the top is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and on the flip side, eight megapixel rear facing camera. Nexus insignia, a million and one fingerprints. This thing loves fingerprints in black. The white version was much better at resisting, clinging onto those fingerprints. You want to try, we want to try the sand version as well to see how that fares. Ultimately, it's a very rich in hand experience. The screen looks great. The size is actually quite nice and it's interesting using Android with this kind of aspect ratio. We'll have to hold off on giving a verdict on its utility until we bring you our full review. If we bring in the Samsung made Tab S8.4, you can see this is a much less bezel heavy affair. Sure, you don't have the front facing stereo speakers, um, but it's a much easier tablet to hold. It isn't that much smaller as far as the screen goes, 8.4 inches by contrast to the Nexus 9's 8.9 inches. Still, very, very elegant, very, very slim, 6.6 millimeters thin um, as opposed to the 7.9 millimeters on the Nexus and much lighter, just 294 grams by contrast to 425. What else can you expect from this tablet? Well, you have a couple of more connections. You have got those stereo speakers, one at the base and one at the top, depending on which way you're holding it. We're guessing Samsung positioned it like that logically so that you could hold it in landscape while watching and listening to stuff on here. You've got traditional Samsung buttons when holding it in portrait mode down at the bottom. These include a home button and two capacitive buttons either side. This also doubles up as a fingerprint scan Scanner. Up at the top front facing camera, right hand side you've got a power button, volume rocker, an infrared blaster and a micro SD card slot. This is expandable um, which is great and unlike the Nexus 9. You've also got a micro USB connector, 3.5 mil jack and no buttons to the left hand side or top side depending on which way you're holding it. Flip side you've got this weird pattern. It's quiet nice insofar as it doesn't attract fingerprints. It doesn't feel quite as cheap as glossy, glossy Samsung devices of old. It doesn't look amazing, but the in-hand tactility is secure, grippy, without being a fingerprint fiend. 
8 megapixel camera and flash. You can also clip on some cool keyboards onto both of these devices. But we're not going to talk about that right now. What we can quickly talk about is how they stack up in a real side by side. You can see how much thicker the Nexus 9 is and it's also a fair bit taller and you can make out that Nexus 9 absolutely engulfs the Tab S 8.4 which should illustrate the type of person who might want either device. If you want a beefier device, something you can really get your hands around the Nexus 9. For smaller hands, the Tab S 8.4 might well be for you. Now moving on to those screens, and they are very different screen technologies and indeed resolutions. You have a Quad HD resolution of 2560 by 1600 on the Tab S 8.4, and it's a super AMOLED panel. It looks great, viewing angles are very good. Slight blue hues by contrast to the Nexus 9's LCD display, which when we bring into frame also looks stupendous. Sure it isn't as sharp, if it's got a pixel density of 281 by contrast to 359 but you'll be very hard pressed to spot one of those pixels no matter how closely you look at this thing. If we take a look at viewing angles they're also really really on point brightness is good too and ultimately both of these devices screens are absolute winners on first impressions. We have to run some more conclusive tests on the Nexus before we give you a final verdict on it but first impression very very good. If we take a look at those user interfaces, this is where we really feel like the Nexus might just edge ahead here. Why? Well, it's because it runs stock Android. Of course, stock Android has one advantage and that's it's stock Android. But stock Android in the form of Android Lollipop is the very latest and greatest that you're gonna get and has a few really nice enhancements. It runs a similar kind of Google Now launcher to what we've seen before. But you've got a much richer lock screen integration. You've got a more clean notification notification tray. You can also see your um, notifications from your lock screen and this is in a lower power mode so it will use less power. You can swipe them out of the way. The lock screen, in fact, everything is just much cleaner. You've got your OK Google functionality where it will pick up your Google Now inputs from the home screen. Also, you can see in the applications tray, it's got a white background. It just looks a lot cleaner than its predecessor. So if like us, you want to throw on a really busy wallpaper, you can still see all your applications very easily. The material design, the iconography has extended right throughout the user interface, dipping into the settings as well. If we take a look right here, you can see as we go to the bottom, you've got some very nice attractive animations that are almost Zelda Wind Waker type 2D, very, very elegant. And this extends again to the applications too, such as the Google Play Store. So ultimately, we're really, really happy with what Google has done to the operating system and we have a lot more confidence that this will stand the test of time performing smoothly based on the fact you haven't got another skin on top of Android. If we move that out of the way, we can take a look at TouchWiz and TouchWiz has some real perks to it on the Samsung Tab S 8.4, specifically in the form of Galaxy Gifts. We'll talk you around the main UI first and you can see this is old school Android 4.4. One finger pull down, two finger pull downs, you access all your quick toggles, much, much busier, much more going on. The additional amount going on is thanks to Samsung, and that's with My Magazine UX. A load of tiles that are really incongruous with the actual main user interface, and that's largely because they require you to manually refresh them. So it's all a little bit of a faff jumping into the applications tray and you can see it's a pretty traditional applications tray and we can jump out of that, pinch the home screen where we can control widgets and wallpapers. So it's simple enough and again Samsung's made efforts to really clean up the user interface such as um, in the found in the settings for example and you do have Google Now integration through a long press of that home button. Jumping out of that though, there are a few areas touch with really does hinder everything. And that's like if you put a Dropbox account on here, it's gonna throw all of your Dropbox photos directly into your gallery. And that will clog this thing up in no time flat, which is a real shame. Loads of things like that just really irk us. So touch with could be a little bit better. The Galaxy gifts that you get free are gonna be great for people who like music. You'll get a Deezer subscription, reading, you'll get a Bloomberg Business Week, Economist subscription. You'll also get a Marvel Unlimited subscription for anyone who likes comics like we do in case you couldn't tell. And so the user interfaces will be different. The Nexus 9 is definitely our preference. So if you like free stuff, you're probably gonna prefer the Samsung Tab S 8.4. 
Now moving on to multimedia and well, if you're watching loads of movies then the Nexus 9 might irk you with its black bars up top and bottom. If you're gaming, there really is no comparison. The Nexus 9 is gonna be the clear winner. Why? Well, it's because of the GPU in this thing. Benchmarks have leaked and we've indeed thrown a few benchmarking tests out there. Um, and you can see it scores monumentally. The Tab S8.4 in 3D Mark scored around 12,000 or so, this is 25,000. The processor in here is a dual core NVIDIA Tegra K1. Um, it's clocked at 2.3 gigahertz and that's by contrast to the 1.9 and 1.3 gigahertz quad core gigahertz quad cores making one octa-core processor and it's an Exynos processor in the Samsung Tab S8.4. Now anyone who says, yeah, but you've got three gigabytes of RAM in the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8.4. Yeah, but you've got a Kepler DX1 GPU in the Nexus 9. And what that means is it really is gonna blast through games, especially games optimized for it. This is by contrast to the Mali 628 T628 GPU in the Samsung Tab S8.4. Other key specs, well, both are available in Wi-Fi and LTE models, 16 or 32 gig in the Nexus 9 non-expandable which is a real bugbear but you've got expandability but just 16 gigabyte variants of the Tab S8.4. What we would have loved would have been 32 gigabytes and expandable on both but hey never mind. You've got a 4900 milliamp battery in the Tab S8.4 and a 6700 milliamp battery in the Nexus 9 and that really does round off our comparison pretty well. We really are enjoying our time with the Nexus 9. It's definitely got a few quirks that we're looking forward to revealing and highlighting and dwelling upon in more detail in our full review. We'll also do things like record other videos in the meantime that put the speakers through their paces and a bunch of other stuff, but we want to hear what you want us to do with it as well. Check out our USB on the go video, check out our hands-ons and our unboxings. And if you think we should record a video that you want us to, fire them in the comments section below. If you like the video, click like, and if you like BTECT in general, click subscribe. Thanks for watching BTECT.